The Clayman Institute for Gender Research at Stanford University, creating a more equal society for women and men through data-driven research and public education. low-middle-income countries, it's women and girls that are fetching water for the households. Um, it's amazing how little we know about this. Uh, and the, the most widely cited study focuses just on sub-Saharan Africa. It's published by the UN, and it's estimating 40 billion, with a B, person hours, women and children hours, devoted each year for just water fetching um, in that part of Africa. The proportion of people without access to improved water supply is decreasing. But if you look particularly in the world's poorest regions, so South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, what kinds of gains are being made? Um, they're almost all of that non-networked type, right? So it's not reticulated systems where bring pipe to your yard and a tap to your house. It's the 460 meter away borehole or share tap that you're still going to have to go out and, and fetch water for. So these columns, um, what share of people had no improved, no, no access to improved water supply, had household level access, so a yard tap or in-home connections, or who had that sort of more distant um, point source, right, non-network solutions. And you can see the line here is almost flat, and the line here is exactly flat, right? So things are not um, changing much in, in terms of getting people up the ladder to higher levels of in-home service. We are looking better on the aggregate statistics, but the kinds of investments we're making are the ones where women are still walking and fetching. If you look at this comparison, right, this is improved access, this is unimproved access, these look a lot more similar, and in fact, you can see it, for, for some aspects, this is superior, right? Women don't have to find cash um, to access this. And if you look at this as well, the time is actually less at the river than at the public tap, and that's because of queuing. You don't have to stand in line at the river. So there were actually, it was a very interesting conversation to have with a lot of the women about their choice to, to continue to use the river when the public tap was available for some of them. When the improvement is from unimproved to non-networked solutions, which, as we've seen, is the major thrust for South, South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, in terms of time savings and physical burden for women, we're, you don't always get a big bang for your buck. You don't see a big um, improvement. The literature on health effects of moving from unimproved to improved but non-networked is very, very mixed. This is water that was fetched from the same bore well, but carried home and then stored for a period of time, which is the practice. If you have to walk a distance to get it, then you have to bring it home and keep it until you need it. So this plot showing, and you can see the median contamination level is up here. The WHO standard is here for what's safe water, right? So in that process of transport and storage, um, and because you're working with small volumes of water, there's a lot of way that, ways that this water can get contaminated with these feces, and it's very hard um, when you're working with limited water at a distance to block all those transmission routes. Environmental engineers have absolutely, and public health folks and epidemiologists have absolutely responded to this, but it's, it's actually quite interesting what the nature of the response has been. Um, it's been to think about strategies that can be deployed at the household level to help women manage the quality of water in the home. If you think about what this means, um, if we don't see a big time savings going from unimproved to improved non-network, and we're adding a time requirement, because now you have to do this stuff, in, with those respects, maybe actually the investment pattern and portfolio that we're looking at right now, at least for South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, is resulting in a net disbenefit to women, taking more of their time to focus on these water management issues than, than before. And so in terms of what our group is trying to do um, to contribute maybe to this larger debate and think about how did we, you know, how did we get to a solution that seems to have so few benefits for women um, is to try to unpack and quantify to the extent that we can the full costs and benefits of each of those levels of service. So there are first costs, there are capital costs, there are O&M costs, but there are lots of other costs um, associated with particular water supply choices. And um, we are now starting to, to look at that 
uh, you know, a lot more carefully and systematically than, than we had in the past.